Good luck, honey. Scott here, Blue Mountain Bigfoot Research. Um, as per my wife's little video, I'm coming up squatching for a few days up here in the snow. The uh, snow's a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. It is about knee deep or so. You can see here I've got the four wheeler pretty much buried up to the bottom chassis of it. Um, I tried to winch it up this hill here. I got it up the hill, but I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm moving two feet at a time. It's just stupid. Because uh, where I want to go squatching is on up this hillside up behind me up here. So I found, uh, let's see, this tree and that tree I can hang a hammock between, I think. If not, there's a couple other, like this one and that one. So... I'm gonna give that a shot. It's about 1.30 or so. We got a couple hours of daylight left, so I better get hammock slinging. Talk to you in a bit. Okay, so I got the uh, hammock all set up. Got the tarp up. Got uh, my camp stove and everything set up. While I was uh, setting things up, I made me some mac and cheese. Uh, for lunch and it's going to be dinner time shortly because it's going to be getting dark here in a little bit but uh pan this around here okay got the four-wheeler which is actually buried in snow i'm gonna to have to winch it out of there when i leave also got uh some trail cams put up for the night just to see if anything comes around to check me out. Got the kitchen set up. I will take the food and put it out somewhere in the snow later. I was going to hang it up in a tree, but you know what? I haven't seen any tracks of anything out here since I've been out here. So, got the bed all set up. I am. I brought two GoPros and my Nikon camera to film stuff and I am the worst YouTuber ever because uh, only my one GoPro Hero has an SD card in it and the other ones don't. I thought I had everything set up but typical me. So I'm going to film a lot on my phone which I'm using right now. It's about 5.30 and it's totally dark outside and dead silent. I'm going to sleep good tonight. I'm kind of kicking back in my hammock right now. Uh, you can't see it's in the dark. <laughs> but i um, finishing up my uh, last cup of Starbucks mocha. Yeah, I, I spare no expense when I come out here. So I'm going to finish up this coffee and crawl in the hammock and uh, see if I survive the night. Uh... Okay, I did survive the night, but my phone did not. Um, I did not know that when it gets way like down to like 11 degrees like it was that night that my cell phone it just drained the battery and it also had a little thermometer on my phone that kicked on and said we're done we're shutting off so I managed to warm my camera up and get a few photographs uh, but um, the rest of the day was kind of a bust for me I did go out and get my, uh, trail cameras put up and I went ahead and packed it up and, and came back that day the next day so I decided what I want to do is to kind of show you what I took out there with me to spend the night and to kind of help all you squatchers out there to learn about what winter camping is all about. 
Okay, as for food, um, what I take out there is this. I have a couple packs here. Now, one of these is the, um, is my stove, which in the winter time there's some stuff you need to think about. There's <clears throat> the stove part, which is the part you really need, but there's some other stuff that goes along with it. Now, I bring some of this insulation. It's like bubble wrap, and you can uh, get it at your hardware store. Put this on the ground so the snow. Um, so this doesn't melt down into the snow and it helps reflect the heat from the from the burner up And then of course you got your gas canister now in the super cold weather um, When it's down below zero or so this gas uh, Will only burn Part of it. I'm not sure exactly which part that is But you'll end up burning this and only half the thing will burn and the rest of it is worthless um, it has something to do with separating the gases in it in the cold weather. But if you turn it upside down and burn the liquid, it's fine. But you got to start it with it right side up first to get this hot. And then you can turn it upside down and adjust it down really low just to burn the liquid in it and it'll work fine. But you attach that, hook that up. I have a uh, little shield here. that goes around this also to help keep the heat in plus I can uh, set this in we close up the uh, fence here kind of set this up like a star if I need to put something on top of it I can do that if a bigger pan then I have then I use for this you can put this on top or you can hold this open and put your pan down in there now this is uh, this is my bag I keep with my cooking utensils in it um, so I got a bag with the stove and a bag with the cooking utensils um, this is what I used to boil water for there you can set that on there and then you can use this cup to eat out of, drink out of, or it makes a lid for this. Um, and then I have my fork and spoon here. And my coffee cup for my Starbucks that I drink in the morning, in the evening, at noon. Yeah, I have a problem. <clears throat> so I keep that in there. Now, I boil, I also use this to uh, scoop the snow and then dump it in there when I'm melting snow for water in the winter time and then right before I go to bed one of the things I do is I have this water bottle um, now this one doesn't have a drinking lid in it it just has a lid on the top that seals really well it's got a nice uh, neoprene gasket in there so I can seal that up pretty good so what I do is I have a built an insulation cup for it here and and sewn a, a kind of a stuff bag to put around it so this doesn't leak I've I used it a few times and I've checked it it doesn't leak water at all so I fill this up with hot water and then then you slide this down in here close it up then when I go to bed at night I put this um, sometimes I usually keep it down uh, on my side so I know where it's at or if my toes are really cold I'll slide this down by my feet so I got hot water and surprisingly enough in the morning this stuff is still warm um, so that's handy and that way I have my water in the morning for my coffee and it's already slightly warm I just dump it back in here heat it up dump in the coffee now as for food goes um, I usually keep this bag here this is where I keep my food this is my instant Starbucks coffee uh, I keep trail mix and stuff in here 
Then I usually get these camp meals. I use them quite often. And uh, this one's the chicken and dumplings. So you tear these open, dump hot water in them, and then let them sit. So I also built this insulation insulated bag for them. So what I can do is I put the hot water in here, I put this back in here and close it up and that keeps the heat in there while it's cooking. So it takes a little while for it to soak up, a minute or two. It says, uh, you know, after four minutes you stir it and after eight minutes it's ready. So eight minutes, we're in its eight minutes below zero. Um, this will still keep the food warm and cooking inside there. So, um, I also keep a, this is like a portable, like bucket that I take out with me in case I need to collect water or water to wash in. This is kind of like my sink, my wash basin. Um, you can fill this up with water in there. And I just sealed it. And then I have this here, it's a camping towel for washing and drying after I take my, my sponge bath. Then I also have these here. And these are actually washcloths. You got a whole washcloth here. Um, let me grab some water and I'll show you how it works. Okay, back with my uh, little cup of water. So, this is from, uh, it's called Whimsy, W-Y-S-I. You can find this on Amazon. I'll put links down below. But they come in a package of 100, and this is an actual washcloth. I know it looks like a little tablet you'd take, but once you put it in water, it just takes a second. And voila. You have a nice disposable washcloth if I can get it open here. They're actually pretty sizable. Out of that little tablet, you have this nice, good sized washcloth. I uh, use it to wash with when I'm out camping. And if it's not, well, even if it is super cold, you can hang this up. I sometimes just hang this up on one of my lines, and uh, you can reuse it. You know, let it dry out and reuse it. Or a lot of times I can dry it out if it's not too cold. Or even if it freezes solid, you can put it in hot water and you know and it'll work again. But um, you can hang them up and you can actually uh, freeze dry stuff in the woods when it's really cold. Um, so if you hang it up, let it dry out. I can also use this to burn, uh, to start a fire or just to burn it to get rid of it so I don't have to pack it out of the woods. So that's a handy thing to have. So. On to the next. Now, on to clothes. Okay, what I usually wear in in the winter is fairly simple. It's about all I take, which looks like a lot, but a lot of it's on me. Um, first of all, we have the Under Armour style um, long underwear. And, uh, I bring this and a couple pairs of underwear, but I'm not going to show you my underwear. Um, this is my base layer, layer number one. Um, and like I said, they're Under Armour style because I'm on a budget. But they work really well. They're, uh, what are these called? Mission, something, Mission, Mission Active. Right there, okay? Then for my for my legs, I use a lot of hunting gear because hunting gear is designed to be warm and in the woods, um, and it's a little bit cheaper than you say your active snow gear or 
high dollar ski gear that people buy or mountain climbing gear. Uh, if you buy the hunting gear, um, you end up with a lot of camo, but um, it works just as well. So these are aligned insulated pants. And that's what I wear on my legs when I'm up in the woods. Um, so that's just two, three layers basically with the insulation. Now on my upper chest, I have this. These are uh, our real tree and they're fleece lined on the inside. So this is, this is layer number two, layer number two that I put on. And then I put a jacket on over top. This is a kind of a lighter fleece lined real tree jacket. Um, that's layer number three, which gives me my first set of pockets to put my phone, cameras, because you gotta keep that stuff warm, I found out. And then on top of that, I have this outer shell. It is kind of lightly lined, but not really. It's just kind of got a silk liner in it, but it's waterproof and pretty much airproof. So uh, if it's snowing, raining, or whatever, I can throw this on, and it actually keeps the outer jacket cold. And in that case, the snow just brushes off. It doesn't melt and soak in. Um, so this gives me an outer cold layer that's outside that'll keep me warm. And I've been toasty warm and like below zero with that setup. So, so that's one, two, three, four layers on top on my torso and my arms. And then I have like three layers on my legs. And as for my feet, I wear one pair of socks. I usually have these uh, wool polyester blend socks. They're really thick. And when I'm in the snow, I wear these. Um, these are a Mukluk style boot. They're by Sorrel. And they have uh, these felt liners on the inside that actually uh, just come out of them. And you got this felt liner that goes over your feet that keeps it pretty warm. And then it has this reflective, heat reflective liner on the inside that keeps the heat in the boot. So if you keep it tight up here around your, they got a pull tight, they keep it tight up around your leg to keep the air in the boot. It usually does a pretty good job of keeping my feet warm. I really don't have a problem. Sometimes my toes get a little bit cold, but they always do. Um, but I have a remedy for that. They, actually make electric uh, toe warm ears that you put in your boots which work fairly well which I had some but I broke them <laughs> so now for the head and neck when I'm out just driving I usually use this now I had this when I was in the army when I was over in Iraq um, you know, you can use it to cover your head, you can use it to cover everything. It's actually very utilitarian. And if you roll it up and uh, put it around your neck, it uh, actually is fairly warm. I mean, really warm because it's a lot of layers that go around your neck. And then on top of that, I usually have a beanie cap. Uh, and this is just a, a thin fleece beanie cap. And then I put my uh, bomber style cap over that and this is insulated it's quilted on the inside it's got the fur around it. it's rabbit fur and it actually has little flaps that you can pull down that go over your ears if your ears start getting cold you can put an extra flap over your ears um, I've never had to do that because this really keeps it warm underneath this fleece so that's how that works all right as for extra stuff I take, um, I always have two or three per, I usually wear in one pair and I keep like three extra pairs of socks um, just because if your feet get wet, you're dead. Your toes will turn black and fall off. Um, so I usually keep my feet dry as possible. Um, I check them often. Um, so on my hands, I usually wear a couple pairs of gloves. Uh, I have these thin, insulated gloves here that I wear. And then I have these mittens that I can put on top of them. Or I can just wear the mittens without them. 
but uh, they have a uh, open fingers and then this magnet has a magnet on it that just holds it back and then you can put it over your hands so if you need to do stuff with your fingers it even has a little thing where you can pull your thumb out too so uh, it usually keeps my hands pretty warm um, that's another thing and another thing I can shake if you shake your arm down um, that'll also keep you warm keep your hands warmer once in a while if your hands start getting cold just shake your arm a little bit so as far as gloves go now I always have an extra pair of gloves or extra couple pairs of gloves I keep with me just in case those get wet and extra beanie extra uh, um, shirt um, just to keep things dry now well, let's talk into about sleeping now when it comes to sleeping I, I take those quilted pants off and I just have a pair of sweats and these are nylon they're kind of thin but they're really kind of warm because they're nylon um, I'm going to see how much it doesn't say but anyway they're, they're a thinner nylon um, sweatpants I'll put those on um, then on my feet I will uh, of course take off my boots I will change those other pair of socks and then I usually have these really big really thick 100% wool socks I will put those on and uh, to cover my feet to keep my toes warm at night and then on top of those as kind of a barrier I made these I, I bought a, a like a fleece blanket at Walmart for three dollars and I used my uh, my liner for the uh, pattern of these my boot liners and then I can slip these on up over my legs and then I have a tie that we can pull them tight at the top around the top this will go clear up to my calf uh, top of my calf bottom of my knee and uh, and that will keep all the heat inside that area so my calf will actually help heat up my toes so I keep those and then <clears throat> I have another jacket that I put on uh, sometimes you need it if it's going to be below zero I, I will wear um, a jacket one of my jackets that liner jacket that I had on uh, to bed with me if not I usually just use uh, the, the two shirts to keep warm and I also bring these with me these saved me a lot of times in the middle of the night now I'll put these down by my hammock on the ground so when I get up in the morning and when I uh, if I or if I have to get up in the middle of the night to stoke a fire or to go to the bathroom or whatnot I can slip my feet in there and uh, it keeps my feet off the snow when I'm walking around a little bit keeps these cleaner and dry so when I go to go get back in the bed I can just slip my feet out of there sleep jump in the bed and I am fine and dry um, also at night I have this balaclava and uh, you slip it on over your head it covers your neck you can pull it up over your face it has a, a pull that you pull and keep it down over your uh, over your eyes. I pull my glasses off. I usually hang them on my uh, ridge line for my hammock, so they're right there and I know where they're at. And the other thing is these are fleece gloves that I slip on and wear in the sleeping bag at night. You know, sometimes I'll pull them off to, to so I can hang on to my. Uh, sleeping bags and get them all situated and then I'll put these back on um, dollar store there are two layers in here and they really keep your hands warm while you're sleeping so I will sleep with these gloves on at night especially when it's down around zero or so and I also have this really heavy jacket it's it's fleece lined it's quilted on the inside it has a canvas on the outside 
and I got this just in case I get really cold I can put this on in the morning um, or if I'm really cold I'll, I'll put it on another thing I'll do is and I'll show you in the hammock setup is I will snap this around my hammock and pull it over my feet at night I'll show you how that works in that so that's it for the clothes I pack on to the next thing another essential is a headlamp that you can put on your head um, I really like this one this is actually made by Coleman not very expensive uh, but it has a red light on it and a white light in fact a couple levels of white light um, the red lights really good for if you don't want to mess up your night vision at night when you're looking around uh, that's one of the reasons I don't like using night vision cameras so much thermal cameras aren't as bad but night vision cameras uh, when you're looking at through them like the binos I have um, they really mess up your night vision if you're out in the woods so you're looking through them you pull them down and you're blind for a little while so uh, the red light really helps uh, when I'm walking through the woods and stuff if I need to see something I can click it on re read something um, then click it back off and my night vision is still fine so this is important to have um, also I keep a couple cam lights uh, that you snap shake up uh, red ones uh, usually because you can use those to read by signal with if you need them if all your batteries are dead you got these and you can buy packs of five at the dollar store believe it or not so I that's where I get these and I, I keep a few of them with me just in case now um, here's another one of my dollar store finds is they have these pill boxes from the dollar store um, but I use them for several things um, these unscrew I have some of those uh, washcloths that are the tabs in there and one thing I have bar soap that I just cut in a circle and put uh, the fits in there so I got a little piece of bar soap I got some of my medications that I need in here and also toothpaste on the top um, so it's kind of convenient and you have all your stuff right here in one place I try to keep everything I have in plastic bags just to keep it dry in case my pack falls in the river or whatnot. Um, then of course toilet paper. I usually pull the, the roll out of the, the cardboard roll out of the center so it'll fold flatter and I keep those in plastic bags. Um, usually keep a couple smash down rolls or half rolls. I'll steal one out of the house when it gets halfway down and uh, this is from Coleman I think this was a dollar ninety nine this little uh, hand spade plastic lightweight for digging the holes for that alright one last thing in the winter time I keep with me is these for just in case I get in some icy situations I can pull these over my boots and I've had the ones that are like the cable chains that kind of got little cables that go around the bottom of them and they rip up pretty good or pretty quickly so I've only had you know use them for like one season but these have lasted a long time um, they have metal chains they have these cleats on the bottom of them um, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, they uh, they work really well. You know, and you just put them on the back of your heel and pull the front tab over the front of your boot. Goes on fast, comes off fast. <sighs> really enjoy those. I'll put a link for those in the description also. So that's it for the quasi survival gear that I bring with me. On to the next thing. Okay, now on to the sleeping arrangements. This is my hammock. Uh, this is made by a company called Bigfoot. <laughs> okay, it's a double wide hammock and it's uh, got a 400 pound capacity. Because 
All right. Now, to keep warm in the winter, you have this right here is the under quilt that goes underneath the hammock. And then I have a couple quilts on the inside, and we'll get into that in a second. But this is here what I wanted to talk about. This is my big jacket. That jacket that I showed you earlier. And what I do is I button it around the hammock and I stuff the arms inside out and put them inside the hammock. And then I pull that over my feet just kind of as added insulation. I got it. I'm not wearing it. So I might as well just use it. So this goes over my foot box to keep my feet warm. And also, to keep your feet warm, I took an old um, <clears throat> sleeping pad, like a Walmart brand, the thin ones that are fairly inexpensive, and I cut it up and I used some duct tape on it so I can fold it up and put it in my pack. Now this goes down on the ground when I stand on it to take my boots off. And then I put my little Crocs on there so when I get up in the morning, I can put my feet on that and I'm not standing on the snow. So that's how that works. Okay, now for the sleeping bags, I have in the cold weather, I use two. Okay, first of all, this is a 20 degree sleeping bag that I converted into an under quilt. Uh, actually, I only paid 20 bucks for it at our local buy mart. And then I, I sewed the straps on it, and it works. I took the zippers off, sewed the straps on, and it works really well. Um, so this is a 20 degree under quilt. Now, if you want to go deeper than that, like as in colder than that, um, it gets a little tricky when you pack, when you stack stuff on top of each other. Like two 20 degree sleeping bags will get you down to like minus 30. Uh, there's a chart and I'll put a link for that below and so here's what I do I use this 20 degree sleeping bag but then inside the sleep inside the quilt or the hammock I have a sleeping pad and this is my Swiss gear sleeping pad and it also has a 20 degree limit on it so it's insulated so I put that in my sleeping bag with my 20 degree quilt and then my back side is all nice and warm. So inside here, uh, I have this uh, top quilt. It's a 20 degree top quilt. Now you ask what a top quilt is. Uh, it's kind of a sleeping bag without a zipper. It's just kind of quilt you put over top of yourself. But down at the bottom of it, it has uh, a foot box that your feet go in that's sewed up. So you got this here. So you put your feet in here and then you put this down in the sleeping bag and you slide your feet up underneath there and you pull this over top of you. Then I also have a another now this is a zero degree sleeping bag that I put in my that I put over top of that while I'm inside it. So, all in all, I literally, on my camping trip, it got down to, I think, 11 at night, and I was sweating, actually. I had to take one of my jackets off that I had on underneath it because it was just too hot. Now, another thing that I've discovered from a YouTuber named uh, Shug, and I'll put a link to his page. If you want to know anything about hammock camping, Shug's your guy. I want you, to, you can, he's got hundreds of videos. So I'm not gonna get into all this. If you want to know something, he's the dude. His name's Shug, S-H-U-G. Look him up on YouTube. I'll put a link below to his channel. But he came up with this brilliant idea. And what I did is I took some of that fleece blanket that I cut up for my booties, and you put this over your head and you hang it from your ridge line here and you pull it out straight and uh, you can tuck this, I made a little flap that you can tuck into your shirt here so when you're breathing at night and your breath is going out here onto this 
um, it actually freezes onto this as opposed to falling on your sleeping bag when you're breathing and then your body heat heats that up and it melts it so you wake up and the whole top of your uh, sleeping bag is wet but since this is suspended in the air above your with your ridge line it stays cold so when your breath hits it it just freezes up and you got a lot of frost on this in the morning but your sleeping bag is dry and uh, I really appreciated Shug for uh, showing me this I use it a lot and it really helps so as for sleeping there's the hammock I also have the uh, the tarp that goes over it and we stake that down just keep keeps the snow off you when it's snowing um, I staked the uh, I use my uh, hiking poles and use it to stake up one side of the of the tarp to so I can get more of a view a little bit better airflow through here at night but I still got a lot of frost on the top of my um, tarp because it was I don't know it was like I said it was 11 degrees and it was really still there wasn't a lot of air circulating on this trip so it just kind of collected up there but just shook it off um, when I was packing it up everything was fine brought home brought stuff home I usually take stuff out and uh, let it dry out inside the house I have my man cave here I can hang stuff up in and that helps a lot so as far as big footing on this last trip it's kind of a bust actually um, I was out for a couple days um, literally no footprints of anything I mean anything I heard coyotes at night um, but they were a long ways away and they seemed further down the hill which makes a lot of sense um, I was up about six seven thousand feet where I was at and the only wildlife I ran into was a couple squirrels chattering in the trees and some crows flying over but that was about it I, I did manage to get my uh, uh, trail cameras put out they're still out right now I'm gonna go pick them up in a few days but uh, as far as filming goes all I had was my phone and my phone when it got down to uh, like 10 degrees outside if I had it out away from my body it would get cold and it had a temperature uh, thing flip up on it and says shutting off so apparently your phone doesn't work in the cold so I had to keep it inside my jacket warm it back up use it for a second put it under my jacket and so basically filming this trip was a little bit of a bust but I had a great time kept warm out there really had no problem sleeping at night and um, going to go back out soon uh, I'm going to try to do maybe next weekend and the weekend after uh, maybe not go up quite so high see if there's stuff at a lower elevation so Keep it squatchy and thanks for watching.